Hello, welcome to this session on compression bandaging. And we're a team from Accelerate, and we're very excited to share some thoughts with you today. And we really, really hope there's going to be lots of questions. So I'm Alison, a tissue viability nurse and chief exec of Accelerate. Richard, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, I'm a dermatologist. Uh, I work in the East End, uh, and I've enjoyed 20 plus years working with it. Well, the precursor of Accelerate and then with Accelerate. Thank you. And Karen? Hi, uh, yeah, I'm Karen and I'm Director of Wound Care and Research <clears throat> sorry, in Education at Accelerate and Background Tissue Viability. So we're a group of clinicians that absolutely love compression. So we're going to hand over to the video of the discussion and then please think about questions uh, through that, through the Q&A and also um, post a video. Thank you very much.
So if we can unmute, thank you very much. Um, we've got lots of questions coming in, so I'm going to leap forward um, for a couple of questions. So let's start off um, with um, how do you get GPs interested in compression therapy? There's a couple of people who feel that the GPs are not necessarily listening to them. And how can we persuade the GPs that they may need compression therapy, either socks or um, uh, bandaging? Richard, would you like to answer that one? That's a tricky one, isn't it? Because you're very dependent on your GP. I, well, I suppose push them towards a, the YouTube showing this would be a, a start. Um, and I think try and find some information to give them on on studies that show that it's beneficial and, and, and uh, push along there. Given that, if you keep on not being listened to, then I'm afraid it's, can you find another GP? Um, I, uh, Karen? Yeah, I'm just sort of say there is an awful lot of information, written information now. So, you know, within the Legs Matter site, but uh, generally there is a lot of information. If you have a little look, if you can't look on the internet, then obviously a family member can perhaps do that. And you can just go with something and, and empower yourself as the patient and say, look at this, you know, is this going to be a help? So just ask someone else to help you find the evidence and take it in with you, I think, to your appointment. Um, and if that does add, go on. I was just going to add that you have to remember that a lot of general practitioners don't know about venous leg ulcers. I mean, they, they probably had very little training, a medical student, uh, and, uh, you know, and as a uh, as a doctor in training so it may be just lack of knowledge they, they and, and with a bit of encouragement they could be taken take it up there is also a uh, growing information from the national wound care strategy on the importance of mild compression for all lower leg, leg wounds whether it's started off with trauma or surgery, uh, it doesn't have to be a sort of more traditional leg ulcer or wounds, as Karen was saying on the video. So um, look for information on the Legs Matter site. Um, it's downloadable. Take it in and show them. But of course, that does need courage um, and uh, seek help from your family, I would suggest for that. Another question um, would be around, um, does compression oops, have to be um, within... Um, uh, a bandage. Um, what's the difference between a bandage and uh, socks, for instance? Karen, would you like to answer that one? Yes. Yeah, so um, I think if uh, within the video, as I said, the earlier that we get something and think about early intervention, then we can usually go for compression hosiery. That's usually a good option. So have the same sort of squeeze, the same sort of physical effect, effects as a bandage does, but have hosiery. We also have now a, a, a wide range of compression wraps. So that can obviously be via Velcro. So we have hosiery and wraps. And when we think about compression bandages, we have a lots of different types of compression bandages. Uh, and I know people have been popping up questions about, um, you know, sometimes it's bulky. Uh, is there something else that I can have? So, you know, think about if you do need compression bandaging, because some of the underlying conditions actually do require perhaps the initial bandaging and then a step down approach into hosiery. But think about there are lots of different different sorry, lots of different bandage regimes and some are less bulkier as well. To, to add into that, so as you said, one of the questions was about having a bandage is hot and bulky. The question is, I suppose, is you've got to find a treatment that works. So if the treatment is not working, even if it was not very nice, there's lots of treatments in this world that aren't very nice, but if it's working, then we can always put up with that for a certain length of time. So if the treatment isn't working, um, this is what Karen was saying about looking for other answers. But um, uh, the bulk of the wadding can be a problem. Some nurses do put, um, you know, maybe one and a half to two rolls on every leg. And all that does is reduce the amount of compression that you get from the bandage. So uh, having a, a compression bandage that is firm, that is working, is the important thing here. And if it's not working, then why isn't it working? If we've got too much wadding, is it actually not being put on at full stretch? And so on. We've got to find other, other ways of um, uh, evaluating effectiveness. Um, yes, Richard, go I, I was just going to make a point is that in the journey, when you have an ulcer, if you get compression treatment early on, you might well find it easier with the 
hosiery. And honestly, as it becomes more fixed and there are other problems, that's when we're more likely to need to use the bandaging. Um, and, and also a little bit on the site comes into it, but it's, it's, it's it, if we had a, earlier access for quite a lot of our patients to a form of compression, hosiery or a wrap may be, well be the one that people would choose. I mean, this links into one of the questions actually is about the art of bandaging. Um, we mentioned that on the video. And um, how do people, how, how do clinicians learn the art of bandaging? What is the art of compression? Um, and I suppose I would suggest that it's about knowing more than just how to put a bandage on or that for a venous leg ulcer, this wrap or that sock. You've got to be able to know enough to be able to alter and adapt the treatment to the patient's needs to, uh, as Karen was saying, to the site of the ulcer and, um, and the size of the ulcer or the height of the, of the person. But I think the art, you see, I'm using my hands just as I talk about that, because there is an art around compression about how you sculpt a bandage around the foot. And if you get that wrong, the rest of the leg is wrong. And, and so sculpting a bandage rather than just thinking that it just goes on and it's staying on um, and it retains the, um, uh, the dressing pads is not enough. It's got to be effective. And we talked about dosage. And so the art is knowing a bit like medication. You know, you'd be used to this, uh, Richard, with um, some medication where you try titrate up, you titrate down. You're looking at the risks of the individual and so on. All these things have to be put into the pot. And if you've got someone who's maybe unqualified applying the bandage week in, week out, then I would have to question that because you need to know more. It isn't just about putting a bandage on the leg. Karen, do you have any thoughts on that one? Um, I was just picking up also, as someone was saying about, I think, um, you know, can, they, can anybody bandage? So it's all about an art. And I suppose we, we're we quite lucky. So we have actually managed with, definitely with our, our organisation and others of training, um, sometimes the actual patient and even perhaps more importantly, the carer, the loved the one, yeah. actually makes a better job. I shouldn't, you know, I don't like to say this, but sometimes does a better job of putting the bandage on with training from a healthcare professional than perhaps another healthcare, healthcare professional that doesn't have um, that much interest. You've really got to be very passionate about what you're doing because it's you say, it's not just about putting it on, it's looking at the limb. What does that actual limb require? Where does it need to squeeze? So we know that obviously applying graduate compression will give us a graduation of squeeze, but if we have an ulcer sitting in an unusual anatomical position, then just putting a standard bandage on will not be effective. But we can train and encourage others to take ownership. And I think it's all about self-empowerment. Uh, and just to add to that, um, there was a question about how difficult it is to actually question a clinician. And, um, and the truth of it is, and when we're training, aren't we, Karen, we'll say to the nurses, you know, nurses do get offended, you know, if you question their technique. But the truth is that some people are good at bandaging and some people aren't. We know it. The patients know it. Um, and we've just got to be honest about that. And that's where I suppose the art comes in. But so the question is for people, how do they question a clinician and say about dosage or the fact that they've got an ulcer behind them, the ankle bone and it's not healing. How do they go to a nurse and say, I'd like to discuss this. I think I need something firmer. I think I need compression to the foot or I think I need something different, a strapping or an extra padding behind my ankle bone if we're going to have any hope of healing. Or I've had this same bandage for the last year. It's not working. How do we have those conversations? How do we ha have better conversations? Richard? You're, I mean, it, it is one of the difficulties in the sort of the relationship between the caregiver and the, the, the patient. I suppose what I would say is you could start with having a, an agreed um, choice of what's going to be the um, of, uh, evidence of healing. So it may be, you know, the wound less deep, the wound actual size is smaller. I mean, 
less equity day, you may have agreed that there should be some something that you could all uh, sort of measure or uh, agree on. And, uh, and then if that hasn't happened, then it's a chance for us to say, for both sides to say, well, what's not working? Um, uh, I mean, I, I suppose it's, I, I suppose the other thing that's often, and I think patients in this, it, it's often often more difficult now than COVID is that getting the same group of practitioners involved. So you get a, a rapport with the, the caregiver. Um, and I think that's one of the things that you can sometimes push for if you can is to get the same two or three nurses doing the bandage so that you have some consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid we have to uh, wrap up, actually. Um, we've had some great questions. Um, I think there may be a couple we haven't answered, uh, so I, I do apologise for that. Uh, there's lots of information on all the Legs Matters, um, the Legs Matter Lounge, and they'll be available on catch up. Um, this has been an opportunity for us to get loud about compression bandaging, um, and I hope it's been really useful. And there's just been a comment on uh, Facebook Live about someone saying they just educated my hairdresser about Legs Matter whilst having my hair cut. Well done. The more people know, the better. That's it. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.